Right friends, welcome back to Banking Awareness Lectures. This is the fifth module. There is a slight delay in uploading these modules. I have uploaded the four modules and there is some delay and I can assure you that we will upload all the lectures required for banking examinations before the first banking examination that is rural banks examination. Rural banks examination is going to be held in September 2015 but before that we will upload all the required modules for banking awareness that is first point. Second thing is in addition to these lectures I have already told you we are recording around 12 questions and answers modules as well as the true false modules and abbreviations. Parallelly we are uploading these modules also from this week and the persons who have little bit of knowledge about banking can directly go through those modules, can directly view those modules and for the people who do not have basic knowledge about banking, please wait till I complete lectures then listen to questions and answers. In questions and answers and true false also, I explained in detail and I made those modules in such a way that a person or a layman can easily understand. Have a try of viewing questions and answers as well as true false and if you find difficulty please wait till the completion of lecture modules then listen to those modules. Otherwise try from now onwards of viewing those modules and I hope that you may be able to understand without much difficulty right and these lecture modules will continue and I hope to complete this series of lectures by August end. Initially I committed July end but because of uh, some difficulties uh, we are not able to complete by July end and all the modules of banking hopefully are expected to be uploaded by August end and lectures, questions and answers, true false, abbreviations all will go parallelly and I hope you enjoy these lectures and all these sessions will definitely help you in banking examinations. Right? In this banking awareness lecture, we are going to discuss about uh, know your customer norms, ATMs and what is meant by white label ATM. Right? First and foremost is the KYC. What is know your customer? Know your customer is banks should make sure that you are so and so person and you are staying at so and so address. If I say you are K Aruna in Bangalore, staying in Rajaji Street, Bangalore, bank has to make sure that you are K Aruna. That means your identity is to be looked into by the bank. They have to make sure that you are the person by name K Aruna. If I say you are staying at Rajaji Road, Bangalore, bank has to make sure that you are the resident of Rajaji Street, Bangalore. Please listen to carefully here two things one is identity proof second one is address proof. Identity proof means bank has to make sure that you are so and so person. If you are Aruna bank has to ensure that you are Aruna only. Second thing is if you are staying in Rajaji street Bangalore bank has to make sure that you are staying in Rajaji street Bangalore only that is address proof. So, this know your customer norms specifically talks about identity proof as well as address proof. Why these KYC norms are required? In the 1990s, several United Nations conventions were held and subsequently Financial Action Task Force, a Paris based organization is seriously behind money laundering. You may ask what is the money laundering? Money laundering is uh, illegitimate money or dirty money entering legitimate financial channels that is money laundering. Dirty money or black money or illegitimate money entering organized financial system is money laundering. This money laundering is tackled sternly all over the world by financial action task force because the main worry of the financial action task force is part of this money is going into the hands of terrorists to prevent that and as per the United Nations conventions during the year 1990s 
as per the united nations conventions during the years 1990s finally government of india brought money laundering act 2002 as per the money laundering act 2002 and subsequent money laundering rules 2005 as per money laundering rules 2005 and also as per banking regulation act 1949 these no your customer norms came into existence and no your customer means identifying the id proof that means identifying the person that means he is the right person that is called identification proof second one is address proof so and so is staying at so and so place and the main purpose of ensuring no your customer is to prevent illegal money or dirty money or black money to enter into the organized financial systems right having known this let us look at what exactly is kyc kyc is basically looking at id proof and address proof and to identify or to confirm your identity as well as address six documents are designated as officially valid documents six documents are designated as officially valid documents by the reserve bank of india and these are valid across the country look at this one is aadhar all of you are well aware aadhar is issued by unique identification authority of india second one is the voter's identity card issued by election commission third is driving license driving license is issued by state transport authorities fourth one is the passport the passport is issued by government of india pan card pan card is issued by income tax authorities mahatma gandhi narega job card mahatma gandhi narega job card is issued by various state governments when a person is registered for getting benefit under mahatma gandhi narega right so these the six are valid documents as per the circular issued by reserve bank of india and when you are going to the bank to open your bank account you can produce any of these documents as officially valid documents or ovds if you are producing passport if it has your permanent address definitely passport will have your permanent address then if there is no change in your address passport has got your permanent address and no change in the address then automatically that will be taken as officially valid document for id proof as well as address proof if you are taking pan card it may not have your permanent address pan card is normally used for identification proof this pan card does not have your permanent address in those circumstances pan card will be taken as the identification proof only and for address proof you have to give any other officially valid document you have to give any other officially valid document i would like to make you clear once again if the officially valid document listed here has your permanent address and there is no change in your present address that will be taken as both id proof as well as address proof but if your officially valid document does not have permanent address then you have to produce another officially valid document so as to confirm permanent address right so this is about officially valid documents then another important aspect is ekyc is also eligible ekyc means your entire data is available with unique identification authority of india which issued you aadhar card and if you say bank please take my data electronically from odi site bank will agree that is called e kyc bank will accept e kyc also but you have to go to bank and you have to give mandate to the bank to access your information from odi site right let us look into the next aspect as we have discussed officially valid documents are six if you do not have any of these officially valid documents then regular account can be opened by the banks if you produce 
these documents also if you produce these documents also banks can open bank accounts if you have those six officially valid documents you need not think about anything else but if you do not have those six officially any of the six officially valid documents then banks can open bank accounts if you produce these documents also and these documents are please look into this it is the central or state government's identity cards with the photograph and identity cards with photograph issued by statutory or regulatory bodies you may ask what is the statutory or regulatory bodies sebi is a statutory body Insurance Regulatory Development Authority of India is a statutory body like that we have so many statutory or regulatory bodies in this country and if there is your identity card with person's photograph that also can be taken as a document and issued by public sector undertakings identity cards issued by public sector undertakings identity cards issued by scheduled commercial banks identity cards issued by public financial institutions then they can also be considered and in other case if a gazetted officer issues a certificate with your photograph if a gazetted officer issues a letter with your photograph that can also be taken as a valid document by the banks these are in addition to the six officially valid documents please don't forget and this is up to the discretion of the banks to accept this is up to the discretion of the banks to accept banks may or may not accept but those six officially valid documents banks have to accept but these extra measures as given by the reserve bank of india is up to the discretion of the banks to accept and for the purpose of opening bank accounts customers are categorized into three categories one is the low risk second one is medium risk third one is high risk categories one is low risk second one is medium risk third one is high risk categories and banks normally will accept these documents also normally for low risk customers normally for low risk customers banks may accept these additional documents for identification proof but it is not mandatory rbi has given discretionary power to banks please don't forget and at the same time for address proof recently simplified norms were given by reserve bank of india in june 2015 we have just now discussed simplified norms for identity proof similarly for address proof rbi has given simplified norms for low risk customers i have already told you banks categorize customers into low risk medium risk and high risk for low risk customers as a simplified measure rbi has given some simplified norms for address proof if you want to look into this please look into this these are the simplified norms for address proof that is utility bill which is not more than 2 months old property or municipal tax receipt bank account or post office savings bank account like that some additional simplified norms are given by reserve bank of india for address proof so let me clarify once again first six officially valid documents are for any type of customer banks cannot reject subsequently banks can accept simplified measures for id proof rbi notified those similarly for address proof rbi notified some simplified measures and banks can accept these simplified measures also while opening the bank accounts for id proof as well as address proof right please look into the next issue i would like to clarify certain things about know your customer norms if you are permanent address on the officially valid document shows some bangalore city you can still open your account in delhi let us say you are transferred from bangalore to delhi your permanent address shows bangalore you can still open your account in delhi by giving your self declaration with regard to the address you can still open the account by giving self declaration but 
if you have account with the state bank of india if you are opening another account with icici bank then you have to produce fresh kyc right friends remaining things i have listed out here in this ppt please go through them right so with this let us conclude this kyc part kyc is no your customer basically to prevent money laundering to prevent illegal money to enter the organized financial system six official documents are notified they are called officially valid documents and as a simplified measure some more documents are notified by reserve bank of india for identification purpose and reserve bank gave discretion to banks similarly recently for address proof reserve bank gave some simplified measures for low risk customers right please look into the next issue that is uh, periodical verification of kyc it is to be verified periodically and periodic verification of kyc is to be done for low risk customers once in 10 years all of us like you and me comes under low risk customers periodical verification of low risk customers periodical verification of kyc for low risk customers is once in 10 years for medium risk customers it is once in 8 years and for high risk customers it is once in 2 years and i have listed the other rules and regulations pertaining to kyc please look into it and if there is no kyc if you are not able to produce uh, no your customer norms still banks can open bank accounts but that is considered as small account if you are not able to satisfy kyc norms banks can still open bank account that is called a small account and for small accounts we have already discussed rules and regulations in the previous lectures that means amounts sh should not exceed certain limit right so no your customers periodic verification we have discussed and let us look at the next one automated teller machine all of you are well aware what is the purpose of automated teller machine or popularly known as atm basically you accessing your bank account without going to the bank that is atm for withdrawal of money for depositing of money depositing of money is accepted only at certain atms not at all atms you can do regular bill payments you can take mini statement you can have pin change you can have checkbook request and many more features are available nowadays in atms look into the next one withdrawal in atms so there are certain limits imposed by reserve bank of india on the transactions with regard to atms right in banks own atms in the banks own atms reserve bank of india has given a stipulation minimum 5 transactions both the financial as well as the non financial anywhere across the country in banks own atms in banks own atms that means if you are customer of sbi you are accessing atm of sbi then you are entitled for minimum 5 transactions in a month and these transactions include both financial as well as non financial you may ask what is financial if you are withdrawing money that is financial if you are just going to atm and enquiring about your balance that is non financial if you are giving a request for checkbook that is non financial so financial and non financial put together minimum they have to give five minimum transactions stipulated as per rbi in banks own atms is five but banks can give up to any extent minimum should be 5 banks can impose charges beyond that also if banks want to impose the charges then it should not be more than rupees 20 plus service tax at present service tax is 14% so 20 plus service tax on any transaction if banks want to impose transaction charge beyond minimum 5 transactions right if you are accessing other bank atms minimum number of transactions stipulated in six metropolitan cities of delhi mumbai kolkata chennai hyderabad and bangalore is 3 per month and other places 5 per month they are the minimum transactions prescribed by rpi banks can give more also but if banks want to impose transaction charges it should not be more than rupees 20 plus service tax please remember right this ppt 
is clear about the number of transactions stipulated by RBI. Another important aspect is you may have sometimes problem with uh, ATMs. Sometimes when you go to ATM to withdraw money, you will not get money, but that will be debited from your account. These cases are common. In such cases, you can request your complaint and once you make a complaint, then banks have to solve within 7 days of your complaint. If banks are not able to solve within 7 days, subsequently they have to give you a compensation of rupees 100 per day till they solve the complaint. Banks have to solve the complaint within 7 days. If they are not able to solve the complaint within 7 days, subsequently they have to deposit rupees 100 in your account. Right? So, this is about ATMs. Look at the brown label or white label ATMs. ATMs normally you see one is there is a bank branch of SPI. Normally, ATM will be there in the bank branch itself. There is a bank branch. Bank branch will normally have ATM that is called on-site ATM. Bank branch normally will have a ATM that is called on-site ATM. If ATMs are established away from the bank branches, if they are standing alone, you see several places at street corners there are ATMs. If you see these ATMs at several places like street corners, they are called standalone ATMs or off-site ATMs. Standalone ATMs or off-site ATMs. Please don't forget, on-site ATMs are within the bank branch itself. Off-site ATMs, they will be at places other than bank branches. And this off-site ATMs, other name is standalone ATMs. And these ATMs are of three types. This off-site ATMs are three types. The ATMs which you find at the street corners are three types. First one is they are owned by banks. They are owned by banks. First category, please look into this slide. They are owned by banks. Second one is the machine and security that is maintained by some other firm. The ATM machine is not owned by the bank, but the cash management as well as brand name will be by the bank. They are called brown label ATMs. Please look into number two here. Number one is totally owned by the banks. I am talking about off-site ATMs or standalone ATMs. When the ATMs are totally owned by the banks, they are bank's own ATMs. Second one is machine is owned by some other firm and only the brand name and cash management is owned by bank. They are brown label ATMs. Second category, please look into it. And when it comes to the third type, banks have got nothing to do with ATMs. They are established by other non-banks. They are called white label ATMs. Please differentiate between brown label and white label ATMs. Brown label ATMs, machine is owned by some other firm, security is outsourced to some other firm, but cash management as well as brand name will be by the bank itself. That is called brown label ATM. And there is no say of the banks when the ATMs are established by some private firms, they are white label ATMs, government. Reserve Bank of India has given permission for non-banking firms to establish ATMs. They are white label ATMs. Tata Communications Payment Solutions is the first firm which was awarded license by RBI. They have started white label ATMs in the name of IndiCash. So, white label ATMs are not owned by banks. They are by non-banks. RBI gave permission under Payments and Set Act 2007, banks have got nothing to do with these white label ATMs and white label ATMs impose some charges on the customers for each and every transaction. Right? So, please look into this white label ATMs. One is India one, other one is IndiCash. 
Indicash is established by Tata Communications, right? And white label ATMs. First permission was given to Tata, and the first white label ATM in the country was opened in Chandrapada village near Mumbai, right? And there is a stipulation. They have to open certain number of white label ATMs in the rural areas. That means they have to provide two ATMs in tier three to tier six centers, and they have to provide one ATM in tier one, tier two. That means the ratio between rural areas and urban areas is stipulated, right? This is all about ATMs and white label ATMs. You may ask, what is the tier two, tier three, tier one cities? As far as banking is concerned, you are going to learn this in module number six. Right. With this, let us conclude this lecture. We have learned about uh, know your customer norms, uh, ATMs, white label ATMs. Have a nice day. Thank you.